about Matt to me is that the human is actually the most immortal character in the show. And that's why I always tell Julie, I'm like, like, the apocalypse comes, it's gonna be like Donovan and cockroaches having a cup of coffee going. That's really bright, you know? So it's like, um, but I don't. It's just a, it's a, but it's become a, a bit and I love the bit, so. He's incredibly unreasonable. And yet Matt is very important because he's always been that human point of connection. So he's a really important character, honestly. Um, I don't know how he survives because that <laughs> strains credibility. Um, but I, I really do hold like, if, to me it is my white whale. If you can come up with the pitch that kills Matt Donovan, it is the greatest idea ever. <laughs> and so I am always, always, always in pursuit of it. And I always challenge the room to be in pursuit of it. Um, and I always tell Julie, I'm gonna make it happen at some point. I'm gonna come up with something so irrefutable that she'll have to say yes. But I don't think it's ever, ever, ever going to happen. I would, I would not bet on me winning. <laughs> I think it's something Julie's always desperately wanted to do. Like, Julie's always wanted to do a boarding school show. And so, um, and, and I think it, the answer is kind of that simple. And then as the cast sort of grew and you realize Alaric had become a certain age and Klaus's daughter was a certain age and then the twins, you know, who were like, uh, um, you know, a moment in the writer's room where I was like, oh shit, Candace is pregnant. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, and it's so funny that something born out of a moment like that is they're now two of the leads of our show. And um, so I think it just makes sense. I think it's, it's, it's very exciting to go back to the high school years because I think it makes the show imminently really relatable. Um, Vampire Diaries was ultimately about two guys who have lived for hundreds of years who don't have jobs. And so, like, high school does give you a glorious framework it, that we all relate to. And we know what, like, a large life is ruined either way because, like, he's the father to 16-year-olds. Like, that's a shit show. <laughs> but, like, now they're supernatural 16-year-olds. It's, like, it's just worse. But it's, it's relatable and it's exciting. And all the conventions of school are really fun, you know? It's, like, everybody knows the dance. Everybody knows who are you going to take to the prom and... Just those rites of passage. I think it's a show about rites of passage, and I think a boarding school, and, and particularly a boarding school for kind of troubled kids, is um, a really fun place to play. So. Uh, are there any different challenges in telling a high school story in 2009 versus 2018? I think, yeah. I think the world. I think the world has changed. Uh, I think the world changes more and more every year now than it has in a while. I mean, look, guys, it's the apocalypse. Like the <laughs> president is the apocalypse, and so like we're all just trying to survive. Um, but it's just different. It's it's just different. The world. The world's changed. The way people relate to each other has changed. The things one can say, we can say to each other as, as human beings has changed, and. and I do think it's changing for the better. It's just growing pains, you know? And so I think that's, uh, I think it's just different. And, and we want to make the show reflective of all those things. And so the world we live in today is different. Therefore, high school is different. Therefore, the show is different. So we just want to be, Vampire has always been grounded in a certain reality. And so we just want to keep it real out there. How has that been reflected in the show? I think, I think everything from the way we cast the show to the issues that are front of mind for kids to dealing with a landscape where these issues come up. And, and not only do they come up, but they're incredibly divisive, mm -hmm. you know? Like, the country's split. Mm -hmm. And so um, you, want to be, you want the show... You want as many people in the world to watch the show as you possibly can. But you also want the show to be something you believe in. Like, as a writer, as a you're trying to put something out into the world that you think is worth being heard. And so I'm sure the show will will take, it's just, there are different issues for the show to deal with and things that used to be a simple plot point maybe now aren't so simple. Um, so I think you'll see it in a number of ways, whereas in the past it might have been a right to die episode, you know, like a lark choosing to die. Like we've always sort of done those very grounded do people have the right to end their lives? Do they not? Like, that's, mm -hmm. it's always been like a metaphor. Um, and I think there's just different and many more metaphors. And I, I think we want to be responsible to them as, 
if it works for the story, I, I don't think we're opposed to making it a part of the story, mm -hmm. uh, but not just for the sake of. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I mean, you went to high school, right? Like, high school is the most divisive place. And oh, did you really get the hell out of here? Where? Andover. Oh, is that Massachusetts? Yeah. Um, I did not, but like, I think high schools are divisive, and so that's uh, if they were humans, it would be divisive. Um, but when you are actually different sort of supernatural species and in the midst of all that. So like I would say take that dynamic from the originals and say they're 16 and emotionally unstable because every 16 year old is kind of emotionally unstable. And so yeah, it's like that, it's gonna be a thing. You know, it's like who are the cool kids and who aren't. And not to say everybody sticks with their own, um, but it's, it's a thing what are the perspective of vampires on witches and werewolves and and they are all different and so how do we define that and so yeah it, it, it will come up high school is a very clickish soul destroying place at times <laughs> and so we will do all of those things um, and yeah we'll do them all well we get to spend much time in the classroom figuring out what these kids are actually learning at school I hope so yeah I hope so I, I think I think the Hogwarts of it all is really fun and really important and um, why the place was built. So, uh, you know, and these kids get educated in all the usual subjects and then there is this extra layer. It's not like they're just going to school to learn to be supernaturals, but I think they're going to school to learn all the usual stuff and then how to coexist with humanity and how to live in a world that doesn't know they exist and how to keep that sort of cover is, is, is part of the thing. Um, but yeah, I, I, and it's also just fun. Magic, you know, basketball, football, what's that look like when there's supernaturals playing those games? So it's like, it's, it's all that good stuff. Yeah, so hopefully. Sounds like there might be some new supernatural creatures that we're going to be meeting potentially that come to Mystic Falls. Any, can you shed any light on what we're going to be seeing or what elements that adds to the story? I mean, hypothetically, it would add new stuff to the story, right? Like, it would add new and different threats. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't actually want to say too much. I actually don't want to say too much, because I think that's part of the fun of the show, is figuring yeah. out who the opposing forces are. I think we've always done villains really well. Um, and it's ironic, because our villains have always sort of become heroes in a weird way. It's like... Klaus was the worst <laughs> person in the world in the history of, like in the history of our show, The Vampire Diaries, and he became uh, the weird anti-hero of his own show. Mm -hmm. So it's like that's our usual path, and that's why I like Kai so much is because Kai was just always awful. Kai, you know, Kai was just awful in life. But because if you were a fan of our show, you always believed that Kai was going to turn the corner, and he just never did. Like. <laughs> You really thought he was, and like you would get him there, and then he would always, always, always stick the knife in your back at the last second. But because you love our show, it's like you believed so much it was going to happen. So I loved all, of I love that stuff. So uh, I think we do villains well, all of which is to say, and, and it will be a big part of the show. And then, like, you know, what do you do? How do you face a villain when you're a kid and you don't know how to pass algebra? Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, exciting. Who knows? Like that, that's not even an invasive answer. It's it's one I don't have. I mean, Hope is unique. Hope is the tribrid. She's the only one of her kind. And she exists at the school and I think that facet of her makes life difficult for her. Because she's different. If you're different if you're other in high school, that's hard. So even a school full of others, hope is an other. Hope's a unicorn. Um, and that's really, really hard because it singles you out for attention and scorn in a way that is really uncomfortable. Like, you just kind of want to survive high school. You know, it's like nobody knows who the hell they are in high school. And the people that really like high school, like, tend to be awful because it's like you're becoming 
You know what I mean? It's like, and if you're like, oh, I loved the person I was in high school, it's like, well, have you grown? Um, so, I don't think people that really like high school are awful, for the record. I'm sure there are very nice ones out there. But I look back at my high school person, I go, yeah, I wasn't the best version of myself yet, but I was, you're figuring stuff out. Um, and so, it's, it's part of it, especially for hope. Like, anything that signifies you as unique in high school is dangerous, you know, because you're all just trying to not get stuffed in a locker, probably, and, you know, you're the only one and you have nobody necessarily else that's just like you. And so those challenges, I think, are very specific to hope in an interesting way. And I think it's something kids deal with. Maybe not at Andover, but I don't know. I don't know how Andover works. It was lovely, yeah, exactly. It's like, it was great. But everyone's your awesome. Yes. I'm awesome. No, it, it was lovely. Right. You were on the good side, see? You are on the good side. She was stuffing people in lockers. Have any kind of adult friendships, relationships, or just kind of yes. kind of daddy? No, no. I, a, I think Matt Davis is way too good an actor, and obviously way too handsome. He's right over there. He's so <laughs> handsome. Um, but no, I think I think I think fatherhood is a big part of it, and I think that's part of the fun. Is Matt himself? I think is an age now where he looks back and like these kids he's acting across. He's like they're kids, you know, um, and so. I, I think we will not run from the adult of it all. I think he will develop meaningful relationships. Dorian's an adult in the school, and like he will have interesting conversations with Dorian, and Dorian will be figuring it out. Um, but father-daughter, huge. Um, Rick has a long history of failed relationships. Um, perhaps some of those will continue. Um, we, we don't know yet. We haven't, we haven't put it in yet at all, but like we want to make him multifaceted. Matt Davis is a wonderful actor, and one of the great joys of the show is we get to give him more to do than ever. And so that's exciting. You know, he's the Indiana Jones of the show. <laughs> and he looks like a young Harrison Ford, so it's all very exciting. Yeah. Cool. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank yeah. you.